Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. I am Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios and today is going to be the first video in a short series where we're going to look at the V Collection plugins from Arturia and the effects processing that comes with getting some big, scary, epic, vintage synth sounds without necessarily using what you might consider to be a synth. Now, what do I mean when I say things you might not consider to be a synth? Well, for me, in my mind's eye, a synth is generally something from the mid-80s onwards. Uh, I think of things like the Yamaha DX7 and generally more modern stuff. Uh, in my mind, at least, the definition's changing. Yes, everything going back all the way to the 50s that wasn't a real instrument. Uh, technically is a synthesizer, of course, so it depends on your definitions. That's not what I'm here to talk about, really. What I'm looking to show you is uh, really cool sounds that I can dig out of Arturia's V collection, because for years and years, uh, I looked for recreations of vintage, well, I suppose, <laughs> synths, but not only synths, but classic instruments that weren't your run-of-the-mill guitar or uh, you know, drum kit, basically not necessarily modern rock instruments, but the everything else. And I found that the Arturia uh, stuff, even years and years ago, was a cut above everything else. So let's have a look at some of the more vintage instruments in this particular episode. Uh, starting with the good old electric piano, otherwise known as the Fender Rhodes. I'm just going to turn off the other plugins here and turn off the chorus pedal. This plugin itself comes fairly fully featured, but this is a fairly straight ahead uh, Fender Rhodes, and this is how it sounds normally. <laughs> That's with the reverb coming from this amp here. So if I turn that off and turn the tremolo off, we get something much more natural. Uh, but yes, uh, it's a fairly straight ahead instrument. I mean, you can do the whole the doors thing and that kind of And so on and so on. You can do that uh, uh, Riders on the Storm thing with an electric piano all day long. And there are a couple of models in here. There's the Stage, which does a slightly older and slightly newer version. The slightly newer version is generally a bit cleaner with a bit more low end. It's got more of the... And then there's the Suitcase model, which you can change up here. Uh, I usually tend to like the Suitcase model more. It's got this... Uh, really quite intense vibrato that's left and right, kind of auto pan, and I really like that usually. In fact, I, I'm just gonna go with that. And then there's options that are pedals included, like phaser and flanger, you can change all the settings, and between them they sound fairly uh, 70s. And the chorus is the one that really gives it that big width, that kind of... Now the analogue delay that comes with it here is cool. Uh, can you see? Yeah, you can see that. Uh, but that's mono, so if I do that... We're already firmly in synth territory here. But what I want to do is make this sound really big. And the first thing I'm going to do is Arturia's pre-1973, which I'll pull out from behind my head there, uh, is a very, very cool Neve plugin where it gives you a bit of drive. If I just unbypass it and turn it on, 
Uh, there are two types of transformer circuits, so it gives you a bit more subtle saturation. And there's quite a versatile EQ section, which for that synthy thing, I had a bit of the ultra low end boosted and a bit of ultra top end. So suddenly it sounds a little clearer. And suddenly we go for this. And you can actually see the levels on the left and right there because of the uh, tremolo stereo thing going left, right, left, right, left, right. And I think that sounds really nice. I'm going to turn the output trim up because this is less loud than the uh, the original stage keyboard. So we've got this. Nice. And the thing that really sells it is the delay eternity, which I'm only using one side of right now. But it's a really, really nice ping pong delay. Ping pong being left, right, left, right. And much like that tremolo, which was why I was using the stage version so they didn't really compete. But the filter, I've changed the cutoff to be really soft. So without the cutoff being soft on this, we get this. Which is a straight ahead delay. So if I do a chord. Sounds nice, quite synthy, if you will. Uh, but if I use the cutoff to be quite low, like 1.5K region, suddenly that means it's going to be a much darker reverb delay. Blech. Much darker delay. And you can hear now how the top end on what I play is much brighter than what comes out in that reverb delay tail. So. There you go. And some of the things that make for a real classic kind of synthy sound, if we're thinking kind of Stranger Things and that kind of what have you, you don't necessarily need it to be a synth to do that, although a lot of synths will make those classic sounds. What you need is filters, because the filter on this delay has turned it from a, a bright, fairly modern thing from that... And then the cutoff, uh, which is a, uh, a low pass, and it's on this sp very special SEM, which is a particular type of filter that Oberheim invented that just has that vintage feel. And now we get... And that sounds really quite huge. If I was to use that now and make an arpeggio down the bottom, I can do a kind of a... And I'm very quickly starting to make some of those uh, very interesting styles that you will hear in classic kind of soft synth film music. And that's all from one setting. So now let's turn off Delay Eternity and get rid of the stage uh, piano and look at what else we could be going at because there are so many, uh, it's dizzying. So another one of my favorites is the Mellotron. The Mellotron, technically, depending on who you ask, it's the very first uh, synth um, sampler ever made because it uses a keyboard, but inside it, and I'll see if we can open it up. Yeah, inside it, you can actually see a big wheel moving and it plays samples off a giant tape. So this is called Strawberry Flutes, named after the Beatles song that kind of... Oof, that kind of... Best not play too much of that. Don't want to get any kind of copyright strikes. It sounds roughly like a certain Beatles song at the moment, but doesn't sound exactly like it. So let's reset the top end. Uh, some of my favourite sounds from this are choirs. Now here's a choirs preset.
There we are. So the uh, some of the classic uh, choirs from the Mellotron give you that big, massive, scary sound that's almost too vintage to be real. But the trick that makes the Mellotron scary is it is actually real voices. If I play one note, it's real people actually just singing a pitch. And because they would have just been given kind of a, a tuning fork pitch, it's slightly not perfect. And because each note is slightly not perfect, you can actually hear the wobble of the ah on some of those voices there because it's actual singers just trying to hold a note. Sounds huge. Now, what we can do with that is, let's say we take out a little bit of that piercing top end with the uh, Archuria EQ there. I've just taken out a little bit of 3.2K. And let's use a, a different delay made by Archuria. Let's use the Tape 201. This is based on the classic Roland Space Echo. Let's listen to this quickly. There we go, so I've just set this up so that we're using one of the slower settings on the uh, tape echo, uh, using the good old ping pong, because I love a good ping pong. And now if I play a couple of chords, listen to how big and fat and vintage this sounds. Very nice. So if I go back to the Mellotron here, I can adjust the attack. So instead of going, ah, it'll go, ah, and that will give us even more of that spooky kind of. Let's see if I can find a number. There we go. Massive, wibbly-wobbly choir sounds that don't quite sound perfect, and that delay there helps it to not sound perfect. <clears throat> and that just sounds so massive to me. What else have we got? Oh, the, uh, the piano. Let's look at the piano. Yes, there's a lot that you can do with just a good old piano. So I went with uh, a Japanese grand in the end. I changed some of the settings here and put the microphones under the lid. If I turn off the delay for a minute, we do get still a big sound. But when I hold down the sustain pedal, You can get some very epic sounds just out of a really nice piano, that kind of...
a lot of that is the strings uh, resonating inside the piano body itself. As soon as I took my foot off the, uh, the pedal then, you'll have really heard it change. But what really sells it for me in terms of the epicness is, yet again, a delay. But this time it's the uh, Memory Man, or the Memory Brigade. It's, <clears throat> it's an electroharmonics Memory Man, and this is an original Bucket Brigade delay, which is, by its very design, very dark. If I just hit one note, You will have heard that go down, and it's got a little bit of vibrato on it there, which will uh, make the note go up and down. Uh, if I put loads of that on, that will feel a little sickening. But you can use that in a more a kind of like horror film or suspense context. If you pull out some sort of uh, chord with some suspended notes in and loads of sustain, That can become terrifying really quickly. <laughs> and so I tend not to have that much on, but the option is there to make those big horror things. And let's, let's look at one more today. Let's look at my favorite, the Hammond organ, the B3. Nice. So uh, this is a scary little preset that I just put together. So I'll just turn off everything for a minute. So it's really noisy, but that's the uh, the B3 organ with the, uh, it's what they call the mid Genesis preset. Let's just see if I can, uh, somewhere in effects, or is it under mod? Turn down the noise, background noise. There we go. So I can turn off the background noise if that's too much, or I can turn that right up. <laughs> really making the rest of everything sing there. But this particular Hammond organ has got that classic... Ah, I've still got the, uh, the reverb on. So yeah, it sounds like this. Not particularly, oh, big, scary, epic sound, but first thing I did was put a uh, the 1073, the 1973 on there, got rid of some of the super low end so it wouldn't get muddy, and softened off the top a bit, and just pushed that vocal range at 1K, so suddenly it sounds a bit more... Bit more like a, almost like a church organ, uh, but not quite, still got that Hammond-y thing. Then, 
I used the filter mini, which is the filter section from a Moog, a mini Moog. And what I've done here is I've really softened off the top. And so I've reduced the cutoff frequency and made it sound like this. And that's already sounding pretty cool. The reverb that's actually on the Hammond organ is being driven through this and it's filtering the top end off and it sounds pretty beastie. But the real star of the show here is the intensity reverb. Now this is set in a very clever way. They've called their preset feedback soundscape, but I've messed with it a little. And it's got a set size of the reverb and a set amount of uh, reverb feedback. So if I just hit it, it should give me a very quick stab. Very cool sounding reverb, but as I hit it and make noise, the more noise that goes through, the feedback itself into the reverb and the size all change and react. So that's where, as I start playing these big notes, That's me holding down the pedal there, but that is creating its own massive soundscape. And that is really cool. Uh, that means that the intensity reverb will give me a massive, massive sound. And there is also a freeze function. So if I decided to do that one more time, but hold the freeze down. So that reverb was separate because of the dry wet blend from the actual organ. So I, you could hear me playing underneath that big epic sound. Because of course I do like dry wet blends. So then I can do that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So there's so much that you can do with the Archuria uh, V collection. It's absolutely insane. Uh, I have to say at this point, full disclosure, thank you for Archuria for sending me the V collection. Uh, they gave me a time limited uh, demo to try it all out. So I'm not being paid for this. I'm not even really being given anything for free because with it being timed, I kind of have to give it back. But I'm really interested to do another one of these, giving you some big epic examples uh, using actual synths. So things like the uh, the Fairlight and the DX7 and uh, the Roland Jupiter, they're all in there. And there's so much I've barely scratched the surface of the V collection. And I think I'm going to go and make some music now if I get a chance. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next video. See you later. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server, link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.